I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats at the If I Ruled TO event at the Sheridan Center in downtown Toronto. I'm here with Esther, Angel and Kavon. What has been the best part about today's events for you guys? Definitely the performances earlier today. Mm -hmm. It was very moving and very fun to see. And yeah, it was just great. Awesome. I think it was the speeches. I think they were very um, inspirational to the teenagers and the youth and everything. So they were, I really liked them because they had a lot of meaning. Awesome. I definitely enjoyed the performances. The, I really mostly enjoyed the drumming, which was really entertaining. It was really um, hype. It was like hyping up the crowd. It was like really um, playful. Like you could dance in your chair and stuff like that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And listening to all these tremendous speakers, was there anything specifically that sort of really resonated with you that's really stuck with you? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think it was in the spoken word, one of the spoken words. Um, they said, where you from doesn't mean that's who you are. That really, um, very like, you know, it meant something to me because everybody thinks, oh, if you're from a certain place, that's who you are, that's who, that, that's what defines you, but it's not. It's who you really are on, on the inside, your personality and everything. Absolutely. I think it was like the whole event actually because like it was teaching teenagers to be themselves, like have a dream, be more confident and be successful in life. So I think that was like really inspirational out of everything. Yeah. Great. I believe in um, just believing in yourself. Don't like let anybody put you down, and like um, you have the power to be anybody that you want to be in the future. And that's mostly it. Great, wonderful. And what are your dreams for the future? <laughs> to become a pediatrician. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Um, I would like to be a teacher. I would like to pursue more in my acting career, but on the side, I'm going to be a social worker. Very nice. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on being here and being so involved in your community, and good luck with all of your goals for the future. I'm sure you'll do very well. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto. Why is this important to you? Um, I mean, you know, I actually had said this in the drop that I did for this. The fact that, you know, we all relate to these communities. I know I came from modest beginnings. I pretty much, I've lived in pretty much every neighborhood. Jane Finch could probably, you know, Jane Finch would claim me. You know, and that's, that's really where I'm from. But I've been, I lived in Rexdale, I lived in Malvern. And, you know, just understanding what those communities are. And they, they ultimately raised me, gave me the confidence to, to go out here and, and, and to, you know, pursue my goals. And, and now to be able to have the opportunity, you know, to be out on a, like, like world, worldly exposure, exposure, sorry, global exposure. Um, but this is where I started from. This is my roots. So to have the opportunity to connect with the youth and, and us be able to just talk and share our experiences and, and for them to see that whatever their aspirations are, that they're tangible. You know, everyone here represents that. You know, and I think, you know, there's power in numbers. So the fact that we're all here, the energy that's here, the care that's going into this, um, is a great thing to be a part of. And, you know, I want to say long overdue, but the most important thing is that, it, you know, it's happening now. Can everyone answer that question? Uh, I think for me, um, you know, I do a lot of, uh, a lot of youth work, and it's just a great opportunity to, to have young people look at people who look like them, who come from communities that they come from, 
and see success stories that they can identify with. And I think um, our being here just helps to empower them to, to follow you know, the path that we've kind of set for them and actually take it you know, so much further because they have you know, the social media and all that stuff that a lot of us didn't have when we were coming up that they can, they can follow the path that we set but then just become trailblazers and take it to somewhere completely new. So I'm, I'm just here to share um, you know, what I've done and what I've experienced and, and help as many people as possible to try to feel, have the confidence to, to move forward and take that road. Well, I came from Lebanon, I'm an immigrant here, so I, I wasn't born and raised in Canada, or born in Toronto, but I live in Toronto now, and I've come a long way. My uh, parents sacrificed a lot for, for me and my family, and we didn't really have much growing up, but, but they sacrificed everything for us to have better here in Canada. So I can make it here than anybody can, and that's part of my plan. I think, you know, for the reason for me, I was part of the system. I was in the children's aid when I was a kid. Um, you know, when you lose both parents and you're on your own, um, you, you tend to feel like you, you know, nobody's there, so you decide you want to go another path. But for me, I decided that, you know, I, I could do something different and I could actually work with kids uh, as of now because they, they, they can learn from my experiences uh, as a child growing up because I was, I was going through all the struggles. I was homeless and all that stuff, so I went through all that stuff, so I learned a lot of different things you know, with that, so I'm able to help kids and, you know, steer them in a different direction. Um, well, I'm here definitely to be a part of the conversation. I was raised in what was called Metro Housing before it became um, Toronto Housing Authority for 18 years of my life. My mother worked at General Motors and raised nine children and uh, paid rent, market rent, as she would call it. Um, but aside from that, I feel that there's um, we're able to speak to one another on social media, but sometimes celebrities and artists are untouchable and unreachable. And so to be able to actually be here to connect physically, it's a big deal. And um, you know, I think that we, we need to take time to listen. Oftentimes these summits, it's really about us telling them how you can make it follow this path and that path and I think there's a lot to be said in what these youth have to say and what they're actually learning out there and be able to be our teachers. So I'm here actually to learn as well as to teach. I think this youth summit is one of the best things that has happened within TCH. Um, I've been living in the Fall South community for a good portion of my life and to see I mean I personally feel that this event has been long overdue but I'm happy that it's here now I'm happy that I'm a part of the committee I'm happy that I was able to assist in making youth the youth and their voices be heard Touching on what Julie Black said, it's really important to have these type of conversation. And if I rule Toronto as a platform to have our voices heard and really be a part of that dialogue. Today we're gathered with decision makers, community members, young people, and it's really about listening to those voices and trying to make concrete um, actions in order to solve some of those issues that concern us young people. Hey folks, my name is Jada Man. This summit is very imperative, very important because the youth, I mean, I'm still a youth, I hope so, but um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm active in the, what we call the streets and the neighborhoods, and uh, the youth actually don't see any models, any, any, as Julie would say, uh, you know, celebrity type figures come to them and actually show them that they care and they can make a difference with their lives, right? All they see is their neighborhoods and, you know, they're stuck within the walls of their neighborhood. So this allows them to go outside of the neighborhoods, get exposed to even being downtown for the first time and, um, you know, interacting one-on-one -on -one with people who they look up to from the communities. Some more high profile, we're on the rise and, you know, it's a, it's a good blend, definitely. It's neat, for sure. My name is Latoya Rodney and I think that it's like evident based on the numbers of youth that came up today. When you open a space like this and give them an opportunity to come, they'll come. I got involved in the gang life activities when I was younger because I didn't have things like this to go to. So when you guys give the youth an opportunity like this, they're gonna come. And that's all I have to say. 
ask me what I think. <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. It's, a, it's an opportunity to really have our voices heard and really get the message across. And I forgot to introduce myself, but my name is Shukri Duwale, and I'm one of the rising leaders within my community. And I think it's a blessing to connect with different um, areas within the city all under one roof. So, so that's um, a change in itself, because things like that usually don't happen. One question, last question for me, I'm just doing the documentary for us. One book that you would recommend, name the author and why? Everyone, please. Okay. All right, um, so one book that I'd recommend that everybody working with you should get is what it's called Whatever It Takes. Uh, it's a book on Jeffrey Canada. Forgot the author's name, sorry about that, but that's the book that everybody needs, for sure. Um, the book that I would recommend is the autobiography of Malcolm X, as told to Alex Haley. That book is very crucial, especially for the young men and women to read, because it speaks about some of the challenges that we face in our community, but it also gives you a more proactive, objective rather than reactive ways of really addressing some of those issues. And I believe um, Malcolm X is an icon in himself, and him and his wife, his late wife, Betty Shabazz, have done a lot of great things for the community. Coming back to me, Latoya Rodney. Um, I think that the, I'm going to recommend the Bible because the reason why I say that is because there needs to be more spiritual leaders that are working with the youth as well. That's a part of why. That's that's a that's a part of what they're missing. Why they're getting involved in certain things, and that's just my opinion. Well, she took my book. <laughs> I also agree. The Bible is. I guess a book that I would recommend to a lot of people to read is, I mean, not only does it teach leaders to become, I guess, spiritual guidances, but it also enriches the leader themselves to help themselves and help others. Um, wow, so many books to recommend. Yeah, ideally. Um, I would recommend The Four Agreements by um, Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, being an, an artist and a musician, it's so easy to the four agreements basically is don't take things personally, um, don't make assumptions, be impeccable with your word, and always do your best. And the one that resonates the most with me is, uh, is always do your best, because your best today may not be your best tomorrow. So, you know, oftentimes we're so critical of ourselves and critical of others, when that day I may have a flu, and that's the best that I can do for that day. So I, don't need not, I need not beat myself up and just give all I can. And that can apply to any aspect of your life. So the four agreements is an easy read, something you can throw in your purse or your, or your man purse. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to make a point of the fact that this is a, it's a, it's a community thing as far as, you know, not only the youth that are present, but just in general, it's like this is an us thing. You know, as as Canadians, like I don't want this to seemingly be just about just you know black youth. There's a lot of black youth that are present, but a lot like Carl's story of coming, you know, his parents coming from Lebanon and then striving and achieving all that he has. I'm proud of him and proud to be able to call him my brother. So, you know, just so it's clear, you know, this is this is a community thing. What happens, what happens to the next man is essentially what happens to you. You know, how we treat each other is crucial. And on to. Uh, Selecting a book. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I, well, I guess there's two. I mean, aside from the Bible, I guess there's two I would recommend. Uh, I personally think that the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene is an excellent read. I think it really opens your mind. I think uh, I would say, you know, 16 is probably a good age to get at that book because, um, <laughs> you know, it gets you into different. It gets you into different time periods in history and gives it gives a lot of great analogies. Um, to, that are applicable um, to, to life today and, and how to conduct yourself and, and understanding sort of the, the nature of, uh, of, of humans, just how we are, how we interact with each other, some things that we do um, subconsciously and some things that, um, you know, are, are taught. But uh, the other book I would recommend is um, Pablo Coelho, uh, The Alchemist. Uh, I think it's a great read, just metaphorically speaking, I think it's a... Uh, I think it's an amazing story um, that can really encourage and, and, and empower anyone that's reading it to understand that 
a dream first put in the thought um, is the first step to taking action towards that dream. So those are uh, those probably be my thoughts. I guess for me, he took he took the I, I, for me it's the Bible. I mean, that's what I grew up on. You know, you know what I mean? And I think if you know if you look at it, it you know it helps you. Uh, the spirit it helps your spirits and everything else like that and, and it also helps you guys and guide you in different ways you know what i'm saying so for me i use the bible and that helped me in a lot of situations so i would recommend that 